this is what's known as a vibrator and uh, everyone alive around the 50s most affluent people would have had one of these in those days radios car radios specifically most vehicles still had valve radios in their cars now the problem with a valve radio is the anodes on the valves require quite high voltage for a radio to work this one is particularly interesting because it's what's known as a synchronous vibrator so the the original vibrators when they first came out all they did basically was converted the the dc into an ac voltage but these ones was extra pins put on these ones so that they will actually have extra contacts inside. I'll show you what I mean by contacts in a minute. But there's extra contacts in here which allow you to uh, hook up to a second transformer. So it will not only will it convert a DC voltage to an AC voltage, but with these extra pins, it will also convert that uh, 230 AC voltage into a 230 pulsating DC voltage. So this was not only was it able to convert uh, DC to AC but also back to DC so uh, so you've got 12 volts coming in through a 12 volt battery and on the output you get 230 volts DC I'll show you now how the circuit works with this what you've got here is a reed now that's a, a long piece of metal and it's quite flexible springy up here you've got a coil and that's a coil of wire with a current through it it will actually induce a magnetic field so this reed being metallic will be attracted so if I send a current through that wire then the reed due to magnetism will move and that's really the essence of how these vibrators work but when that swings back and forth there's a particular amount of swing it's allowed to move in and when it moves across to that side where it's touching it always touches both the contacts if I show you this diagram at the bottom here it will kind of explain how this mechanism works now here I've labeled these contacts up here you can see I've labeled that one A and that one B this contact I've labeled C and this contact I've labeled D now down here I've drawn a schematic diagram of the actual wiring of that it's easier to see what's going on if we draw it out like this now the pins here I haven't been able to show they're connected to these different parts but here I can so you can see that contact B is connected to one of these pins at the bottom and contact A here which is the one next to it is connected to one of the other pins and the same here that these these represent the pins these round circles with the dots in them so contact D this one here is indicated by this this wire here and finally contact C is here and it's represented by this now the reed is one piece of metal but in the diagram it's just easier to show them like this you can see here when this reed here connects with contact C here you must also realize it's connecting to contact D so a good way to show that in the diagram is just to have two of them like this and it's just easier in the wiring diagram to show it that way so although this here represents one reed in the diagram it looks like you've got two but in fact it is the single reed but it enables you to show that that reed when it when this reed moves down to C this one obviously is moving at exactly the same time and it makes its contact to D now given that you you can see here that this pin here is connected to the ground and one side of this coil and let's say we place the battery in such a way that the positive side and we're going to talk about conventional current here for a minute if the positive side is connected here we've connected the battery up here to this ground pin and then the other side is connected across this coil of wire now what's going to happen is that charge will flow through the coil of wire and then back down to earth now earth of course is essentially connected to the, the minus side so you can see that these two points are connected once you've connected that battery you're going to have a magnetic field around this coil of wire you've turned this coil of wire into a magnet because you've got a piece of metal here due to magnetism the metal itself is going to be attracted and you can see here that's what's happening here the reed is being attracted because we've produce this magnetic field around the wire now we're putting a charge through the wire 
So this read switch is going to snap down to here. So it's going to snap down and that one's going to snap down at the same time. When it has snapped down to that position, then you've shorted the battery and there's no more magnetic field. The, the, the charge is no longer going to run through this inductor. So that means that the magnetic field will collapse. You'll get an even bigger spike of charges flowing through the circuit, a millisecond or so. But then nothing will exist, so there'll be no magnetic field. So this reed will spring back and move back up to this other side, contact B. Now, if you had contact B, this end also connected to the plus side of the battery, then you'd get, you'd get the effect of charges then flowing through here, through the reed, because it's contacting, then completing the circuit back to Earth. So then you'd have another shorted circuit. And it would it would hit this top one due to the the actual uh, momentum of the the springiness of the of the reed, so the fact that it hit there would for a momentary second or so it will make that connection and a large amount of current will flow as a large amount of current flowed when it was connected here, so that gives you how the mechanism will work. Okay, so looking at this simplified diagram, what I've done now is. You can see that these pins here have actually connected coils of wire. This coil of wire on this co is actually a transformer. It's a step-up transformer. If you was to put voltage on this side, say 12 volts, and make sure that the windings are greater than the, the lesser coil here by an amount that produces 230 volts, you've got a step-up transformer. So you're going from 12 volts, so if you put 12 volts on this side, you can step it up to 230 volts. So that's what this vibrator is going to be able to do for us. It's going to be able to convert that DC that we initially give it into a pulsating DC voltage. So how does it work? Well, first of all, you can see we make the connection to the transformer here, the step-up transformer. We're going to use contact A and contact B. We're going to connect contact A and contact B to one side, the secondary side of the transformer. So these two contacts here will connect to the secondary side <clears throat> and on the primary side we're going to be connecting these two points here contact B and contact C so you can see in our original diagram that's what contact B and C and then D and A on the outside so these two contacts here contact B and contact C which is the two inner contacts here they then will connect to the primary side of the uh, of the transformer and the other thing to note about this transformer both of these windings are center tapped knowing that they're center tapped we can now look at this circuit and understand what's going on what we're going to do is we've got the battery here now I've placed the battery instead of drawing it like this I've now placed the battery from the center tap here of this transformer and I've just drawn it for convenience I've drawn it in the middle here to make this easier to follow and then the uh, the ground the common here this symbol here represents common whenever you see these symbols it means that they're all connected to the same piece of metal and that's called the common or ground to begin with we've got the central position of the reed it's not touching anything now when that's in the central position what's going to happen is charge is going to leave we're going to look, look at conventional flow here charge is going to leave the plus side it's going to go through this part of the coil through the circuit and then when it's in the middle here it's obviously going to go through it can only go through this coil producing a magnetic field and then back to the minus side of the battery so remember that's like one big chain you know links of charges all joined together when you move one side the whole lot moves at the same time so it's all moving in this direction we produce a magnetic field on this coil again it's going to attract that reed switch down and remember on the secondary side now we've, we've drawn the reed here over here now when that reads down that one's down because remember it's the same piece of metal it's just that it's making contacts with two contacts on the side so it's making contacts with two on the side two on the side so it's making contacts with that one and that one which is equivalent to that one and that one we look at that diagram now as it stands the magnetic field has pulled 
the reed down. So now what's going to happen, instead of charge flowing through the coil here, it's not going to flow through that coil anymore. It's shorted now, so you're going to get a very large, much larger than you had before, because also this coils of wire actually react. So you have an impedance there with coils of wire, so you don't get as a larger charge flow. But when you short the battery, like we've done here with this reed flicking down, suddenly the magnetic field will collapse, so there's nothing to hold this now. For, but momentarily, you're going to get a very large charge flow. And it's the size of the charge flow that's, that we're after here. The larger the charge flow, the bigger the magnetic field on the primary winding of the transformer. And that's going to induce charges to flow on the secondary. When this magnetic field actually starts pushing, it's like a, it's like a pump. It starts pushing these chains of links of charges around and they all start moving together so now they're all moving in this direction so this section they're all moving up in this section they're all moving down here these ones along here are all moving in that direction and you can see where they've actually come from to begin with because the the uh, the chain of these charges is being pushed up then they're all moving and it means they're being taken here from the common they're all being pushed around they're pushed around here and then they go round, this is a smoothing circuit, this bit here, and then they come down through this, back to the common. So you can think of the common as, this is all linked together, so the whole chain of charges is moving around together. The common one then gets pushed back through, out, back down to the common, and it just goes round in a circle. So you can see that the charges are, are all being pushed around. Now that's what we're after. We've got a larger voltage on this side, which is being dropped across this final resistor here. So we started off with 12 volts, and we've got a smooth. Now this, these two capacitors and this inductor here smooths out that uh, pulsating voltage, and you've got a, a fairly smooth DC voltage on the output. So that's how that works. You can see that's one side. When the the charge is moving in that direction that electromagnetic coil is now off that's going to spring back and it's going to spring back into the other direction i just show you now the other side and it springs back now you can see the reed is now connected to this top contact and now this side becomes active this is swung through purely through momentum so it's only touching here momentarily remember this uh, reed is it's very flexible, so it's kind of bounced over to this side now. So for a very short amount of time, suddenly you've completed the circuit on this side. They're going to start moving, and they're all like they're all linked together, like in the big chain. So when one moves, because it's a completed circuit, the whole lot moves together, like in a big wheel. So they all move round. We've got the opposite now here happening. They're going in this direction, whereas before they were going down. Now they're going up, and there is actually, in this case, there is a smaller. Uh, circuit as well because this inductor here is is actually now part of the circuit again and the magnetic field is being built up again the difference between this current here and this large current is this larger current is much much larger than this small one because there's no resistance here to the flow of charge at all whereas here you've got this inductor which is giving a reactance it's reacting to the uh, the change of current but in its reacting it's actually building up this uh, magnetic field but we're not interested in this so much now because the majority of what's happening is up here now so when we look at the secondary winding not much is happening from this part of the winding so hardly anything's affected because of this small current here the main effect is this large current movement here and you can see here again the opposite because it's going in this direction the uh, the windings on this secondary are in such a way that wherever, when a current moves in this direction the windings are that the charge will move down so where are they going to go well if they're being pushed down so here they're being pushed down all of these are connected so like they're all pulling these ones around pulling them and you see they're being pulled out of the column they're going round and now they're being pushed round again they're going out in this direction down here at this point here we're at a pulsating dc if we consider both these directions of charge moving whether on this top one or the bottom one these charges are going to be moving in the same direction but they're going to be 
of pulsating. It's going to be up and down. This part of the circuit smooths, smooths that out. So it takes out all of those bumps and you end up with a, a nice DC voltage at this end. So you can see that the charges are all being pushed around. They're being pushed back into the common and obviously as one goes in, one comes out here and you've completed the circuit. Notice that when they were moving around, this reed was down here. That's why the two contacts are important because you notice on the last one, this reed was down here and this was in the opposite direction, but it, it's still pulling those charges going through here and therefore putting them in the same direction. So that's how we've converted the AC into the DC. We've actually shown how this vibrator will convert a 12 volt supply it will transform it to 230 volts and smooth it out at the same time it does it through the use of a center tap transformer like this and uh, the transformer looks something like that inside the radio it's quite a big transformer for what it has to do so it's quite a bulky thing these old valve radio power packs were quite a weighty thing just to run a radio but that's how it was done